What's going on guys? A couple videos ago, some of you spotted a vintage camera in the frame of my video. And yes, you were right. I have a vintage camera. This is the Canonette QL17 Mark III by Canon. It's from 1972. It's a 35 millimeter rangefinder. It's got a fixed 40 millimeter f1.7 lens and it is such a cool camera. And on today's episode, we're gonna take this out in the field and attempt to photograph things with it. But first I wanna talk about the camera and show you how I'm loading it and stuff like that. Now, the whole vintage camera series that I'm starting is happening with your help. Uh, I posted in my Facebook group a couple weeks ago asking if anybody had any vintage cameras they'd be willing to lend me. A fellow YouTuber by the name of Brian Lackey sent me an email and said, hey man, I've got two Canonettes that my grandfather left me. I don't need two, can I just give you one? And I was like, yeah, dude, yeah, you can. That's so kind of you. So massive shout out to Brian. Be sure to go to Brian's YouTube channel and check it out. It's fairly new, but the dude is an awesome photographer and an even better dude. So go check his stuff out. Now for the camera, the Canonette QL17 was released in 1972. That means it's eight years older than I am. And on today's episode, we're gonna take it out in the field and hopefully make some pretty cool photos with it. The camera itself is pretty simple, I think, but honestly, my experience in film is really limited. I learned film photography back in middle school. That's how I learned photography in general, was on film in the dark room with film cameras. But honestly, within like a couple of years of casually doing photography in school, I switched to digital. So my experience with film cameras is extremely, extremely limited, as you'll probably see on today's episode. So let's load some film in this, and then we'll head to Portland, the hipster capital of America, I think. I don't think I've been there. And we'll hopefully make some cool photos. What do you want to add? I just want to correct Brendan's maths because this camera is actually 12 years older than you. Oh yeah. He didn't add very well. I'm young. This is the camera, I'm gonna load the film up, but I wanna show you um, a couple things about it. Basically, mostly the rings around the front uh, and how it operates. So this is the focus here. We'll talk a little bit more how to focus um, on this camera later in the video. Then you have one ring here, which is your aperture. The aperture on this camera goes from 1.7, which is where the QL17 comes from. It's actually QL1.7, I guess. From 1.7 all the way to F16. And then there's actually even an auto function, which is like shutter priority. In the very front, that's your shutter speed. So you've got 1 500th all the way down to 1 4th. The shutter ring on this particular camera doesn't turn all the way or it doesn't turn properly so I can't even get to bulb mode there is a trigger that's supposed to push you into bulb mode but this particular camera it's got like a bend on the front and I think that's causing the problem I also can't put filters on yeah let's load the film to load the film on this camera you just grab this here you pop that up and then the bottom window will open it opens like that now Brian was also nice enough to leave me some film this is some Fuji Pro 400 ISO, ISO 400. You drop it in there like that, really simple. Then you can lock this down so it's in. And then basically there's instructions over here too. So if you're stupid like me, you can do that. And then you just drag this so it goes all the way across. And then you just line up these dots right here like that. And then you just close it. It's closed and then Best thing to do is to tighten it. So tighten this just to let it get clipped on. And then you flop that over and you're set. Up here it's gonna tell you your shutter count. So there's 36 frames on this. You click like that once and we're good to go. Now let's get to Portland and make some photos. Yeah, the Canonet QL17 Mark III is 12 years older than I am. In fact, since I learned photography at age 12, it's kind of like it's 24 years older than my photography age. But for a camera that was often compared to a much more expensive Leica camera, this mass-produced rangefinder was famed for producing some fantastic quality. And I guess we'll find out if that's true. Okay, so we're on our way to, where are we going? Portland. Okay, so we're on our way to Portland and uh, 
We've stopped at, I don't know what state park this is, but there's the sand dunes off in the distance. And I thought I'd take my first photo. I want to talk about this because there's obviously an automatic feature, but I don't want to use the auto feature. I want to do it manual styles. So when you have a rangefinder film camera like this that doesn't have a meter, you need to do it manually. So I almost bought a meter for like $300. And then I was like, why do I need a meter? I could just use my DSLR to figure out the exposure. Or I found an app actually that does camera meter as well. And it seems pretty accurate. So right now it's telling me F11, the film is ISO 400. And then it looks like 1 500. Okay, it says 1 500, so we're gonna take the picture. And hopefully it comes out. I have no idea if this thing's actually working. Good news, it is working. And though I don't like how this photo turned out, some of the other ones definitely did. But since I can't see them now myself, I thought it would be unfair if you could. You're just gonna have to wait until towards the end of the video to see them. As for the travel, we pushed on towards Portland. On the way, we stopped into Location Scout a bit at Thor as well, which, spoiler, is pretty epic. Then, we headed into the overcast and the rain. Okay, so we got to Portland a couple days ago actually and the weather's been, well, it's been pouring on me the whole time. In fact, here's a couple clips from when I tried to go out taking pictures without this camera. I still managed a shot at Multnomah Falls, but by the time I got one, well, let's just say I would have been drier in a bath. So there's like 30 waterfalls along this stretch. And honestly, I was planning on photographing like as many as I could today. But yeah, the rain is just too hard. I'm already soaked. The camera gear is already soaked. And I'm only on waterfall one. So I think we're going to head back to Portland. The weather's opened up a little bit. It's cleared off a little bit. And so Jody's on like a, a food tour with the tourism board. And I've decided to tag along and try to get some photos with the cannonette. We're here at the Japanese gardens right now. I don't do well with delayed gratification. I want to see how the exposure is going to look while I'm making the image. But I have to say, this naive bliss I've been living in the past couple of days running around completely unaware of how my photos are coming out is amazing. I'm also finding myself much more selective in what pictures I take, since I only have 36 I can. That being said, I can only imagine the pain one would feel if they shot a whole roll of film or a whole vacation only to get home and find out something was wrong. So as you can see, we're not in rainy Portland anymore. It honestly poured on us so much that I just couldn't shoot anything there. And it's sad because there's so many cool photogenic places around there. So instead I'm carrying this video about the Canyonette onto basically Vegas, which is where we're heading towards today. We're on the way to Reno and I want to talk about the focusing on this camera because it's kind of crazy. You have this lever, Sorry about the highway noise. You have this lever, that's your focus. And when you look through the viewfinder, you have a little spot, like maybe that big in the middle, that has like a superimposed image. So you kind of see it in double. You see the mountain in double, for example. And then you just move this bar until you're no longer seeing double and the mountains align. And then you know you're sharp on that point. So if you focus on something close, you have to focus using the middle of the frame and then reframing to take your photo. So it's definitely something that takes some getting used to, especially if you're used to using like autofocus, but it's kind of fun. Not only does this camera not have autofocus, but autofocus wasn't even introduced to a commercial camera for four years after the Canonet was released. Leica dropped the first ever autofocus camera in 1976. Funny enough, Leica soon abandoned autofocus, not really seeing its value. We made it to Reno last night. This place is kind of crazy, kind of fun. Won $100 playing blackjack last night, so I'm good about this. I'm like day 10 of shooting photos with the Canonette, and I just realized something that I probably should have realized a long time ago, or I probably should have just read the user manual. There's an exposure meter. On the right hand side, it shows the aperture numbers, and there's a meter telling you if your exposure's right or wrong by kind of like floating. So if it's underexposed, it's up high. If it's overexposed, it goes down low, and then you can adjust by spinning the aperture ring. 
but on mine, it's broken. So if you had a working one, it would be a cool feature to have, but unfortunately I still have to use the light meter app on my phone. Uh, I'll, link, I'll make a whole blog post about this, to be honest. In the description of this video, there'll be a link to the blog post, and it'll talk about the light app I used and stuff like that. But um, it is now blue hour morning here in Reno, and I do want to try to try to make another photo or two before I have to take this roll of film into Vegas. So um, yeah, let's see if we can make a photo or two. If you were wondering, Canon never released an autofocus camera until 1985 with the T80. I was one year old when it was released. These days, I have a hard time imagining life without autofocus. But beyond autofocus, the one thing I'm really missing is a level. I must have one leg longer than the other because every photo I've taken, as you'll see later, leans one way or the other. As for the streets of Reno, it might be the perfect place for film photography. Town itself feels pretty retro. It's Art Deco, and my camera almost looks like a prop fit perfectly in place here. I don't think it'd be a morning in Reno unless you saw somebody getting arrested. Um, this was fun with the Canonette, but I have no idea if any of the photos worked. There's so many things just not working with the camera. It makes me wonder if nothing's working. When I change the aperture, there's no clicks. <laughs> the exposure meter's not working. I can't go into anything slower than like uh, 1 30th of a second. So honestly, I have no idea if this is gonna work. But we're driving to Vegas right now. In Vegas, there's a camera shop that's gonna be able to expose the film. I shot a roll here and I shot a roll the first day of our road trip. So let's go to Vegas, get this stuff developed, and then uh, I'll show you the photos <laughs> if they turned out. If they didn't turn out, uh, whatever, whatever. It was still fun. Okay, so I'm leaving Photoshack here in Las Vegas. I've got the film, we'll get to the hotel and review them, but the family here that does it is awesome. So if you're coming to Vegas, check this place out. They do huge prints, and they said that some of the photos worked. So we'll check them out when we get home. Okay guys, I have in my hands now the results. I feel like a Maury, like you are not the father. I have the results, the photos. I was really nervous because I, I shot two rolls of the film and I had no idea if a single photo was working. But then when I left the camera shop, they were like, you got some pretty good ones in there actually. So I'm less nervous now. I honestly had no idea if they would work. The camera people were awesome as I mentioned. I think it was called Photoshack in Las Vegas. Highly recommend them. They were printing some big digital prints as well. That looked phenomenal. So if you need some printing done in Vegas, go there. Yeah, let's look at these. They printed off C41s for me and they also sent me digital copies so you guys will be able to see these without me scanning them. I wanna say before I show or look at the photos, this camera was fun, but yeah, it was a little bit of a pain not being able to shoot less than 1 30th of a second. Um, and it was a little bit harder not having a, a, an exposure meter, but I will be doing this more often. In fact, I already have my next film camera and it's a Nikon. And if you guys have a film camera you want to either donate to this project or you want to lend to me if I'm in your town, I put a link in the description of this video to the Facebook, I guess, thread that we talk about this. So if you have a camera and you're in somewhere like, I don't know, London or Munich or anywhere in the world and you're willing to let me borrow it for a day or two to film a video and to play with, please head over there and jot your name down. Now, let's get to the results. I'm super excited. There's two film sets, one from the first time, uh, the first roll, which I did off camera. Uh, this is the set that I did on camera. So, uh, a roll of 36, it looks like I got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven by one, two, three, four. Seven by four is 48, 28 to 29 photos out of this frame. Um, and it's gonna be in no particular order. Okay, a little bit underexposed. Reno, Nevada, I like the composition. Yeah, <laughs> it looks good. Uh, to be honest, it does look good. It just looks like maybe the crop's different than I was seeing through the camera. 
It looks a little bit more squeezed, but yeah, I mean, it works. That's kind of cool. I think that would be better as, uh, I was going to say that's pretty cool, but the horizon's leaning way, way off. I'm showing you guys these, the digital copies of them. The horizon's way off. <laughs> and yes, the crop is definitely squeezed. I was trying to do this photo because it had the honor in Kobe Bryant, and it was in the bottom of the frame, but the crop is, I was seeing this, and it looks like the crop is just tighter in, so that's a bit of a shame. <laughs> Some graffiti. My horizon is way off, but that's okay. The graffiti is cool, but it's definitely cut off. It's definitely cropped. I don't know if that's something that's normal with the Canonet. If what you see through the lens isn't what you get. I was, like I said, seeing this and it looks like I'm getting about this. But man, they look really, really good. Really sharp and the contrast is beautiful. There's just something about film. Shot straight up to the tree because I was bored. Yeah, like, okay, so what I'm going to say about all these images is basically all of them are sharp. All of them are exposed properly. They're pretty good. I just have to pay more attention to things like the fact that it's more cropped than it looked and also that the horizon is way off. But overall, I'm actually kind of happy with some of these. Yeah, that one especially, this one of Portland, I really like. I think I would like that in black and white. Yeah, so my overall thoughts on those images is that the crop screwed me. <laughs> um, overall, like I said, so much fun. And I'm going to end this video with the photos from the first set that I did, which was in SoCal in Southern California. So if you want to stay tuned to the end of the video to watch those, you can. The Vintage Camera Vlog Series will continue again in, I think, from Iceland. I think I'm going to do one in Iceland. Should be fun. I hope to see you guys there. Peace.